Hey guys, welcome back to this exciting lesson in Photoshop. In the previous lesson, we talked about how to take the front view of a table and place it into perspective along the sidewall. In the following tutorial, I'll be going over two ways of how to tweak curtains so that they sit in perspective along a sidewall. So here's a generic front view of some curtains complete with a curtain rod. At this point, I've already removed its background. And again, if you need a refresher on removing backgrounds, check out lesson six. Now having this curtain as a front view would work if the windows were on the back wall. But in this circumstance, I need to place them on my left wall in perspective. I might also add this entire room was built with the design kit. If you're looking for a shortcut to make beautiful rooms in Photoshop, check out our new design kit now available on the Design Cures website. It's made specifically for designers who want to spend less time on building rooms and more time on designing them. All right, so you see I have my finder open here. I'm just going to take my curtains layer .png file, drag it and drop it in here and hit enter. And that's going to leave it on its own layer. Now I'm going to take this curtains copy and just like with the table in the previous lesson, I'm going to hold alt and drag up or down up in this case. And then uh, that's going to copy my layer. And again, I like to do this because it's a non-destructive way of working and I can always go back to uh, my original if this fails. So let's turn off that original. And uh, let's start separating out this curtain. All right, so the idea here is I want to take, take it apart, essentially. Uh, just the p pieces and parts that may need to move separately from each other after we put it into perspective in order to give it a more of a 3D kind of look. So, let's, whoops. Again, with the marquee tool, you hit M to get up the marquee tool. You hold Shift, and that gives you uh, the ability to select different parts of an object. And then I'm going to take that selection, I'm going to hit Command J. And that's going to uh, put that selection on its own layer. So let's turn the curtains copy off. And there we go. We have uh, the curtain rod all by itself. And what I want to do is make this just one long piece. I'm actually going to get rid of this middle piece. I don't, I don't need that. So what I like to do is I hold M again, the marquee tool. Select a very small portion of this curtain rod and then hit command T to bring up the free transform tool and then I like to just stretch this all the way across if I can until it meets all right that's pretty good there we go and now I have a complete curtain rod so then I'm going to take the curtains copy and turn that back on and uh, so Put that above the curtain rod. All right, so the only problem with what we have left is I have the original curtain rod in there. So let's remove that from the curtains themselves. And in this case, I'm using the lasso tool. Hit L to bring the lasso tool up. And this is the freeform lasso tool. And just deleting this original rod. And now I'll turn my new curtain rod on. And there you go. Now we have uh, our curtain separate from the rod. So we can easily manipulate uh, these two things together. All right, so let's group these. So I'm going to hold Shift, click both layers, and then I'm going to hit Command G. And that's going to put them in a group so that I can move them around as one. All right, so let's put this bad boy in perspective. I'm going to turn extra materials on, and that's going to bring up my perspective lines that we created in lesson two. And uh, then I'm just going to drag the curtains over here. 
And I just want to put the left side of the curtain approximately where I think it's going to end up on the side of the wall. So maybe a little bit above the frame. And probably a little bit further to the left. Just kind of eyeballing it right now. We can always make the adjustment later. And I'm going to hit Command T. Right click. Go down to the perspective setting. And then I'm just going to scale it down. Hit Command T again. That's going to take it back to the freeform squash and stretch setting. Right click again, hit perspective. It's kind of a a lot of what this is, is just toggling back between different transform tools. Um, you can notice that the top line is looking pretty good, but the bottom perspective line is not, it's definitely not matching. So I got a little bit more work to do here. Perspective, Command T. Raise this up a little bit more. That's looking better. Okay. So I think I'm pretty happy with that. Maybe a little bit too squished. And again, you guys can play with this as much as you want. I'm sure this could be a little bit more perfect than I'm making it. Um, I could zoom in a little bit more by holding Command plus holding the space bar and panning over. So yeah, you can see this. We want this rod to look just like one of these green lines. It should be following almost the same linear plane. Hold space bar, pan down. All right, so that's looking pretty cool. So I am going to hit Enter. And uh, so let's open up this group now and see if it would help if we um, move this curtain rod back slightly. So I'm going to hold V for the move tool and just touch it back ever so slightly. You know, so at this point we can have free reign to kind of move it around where we want, maybe up a little bit higher. Not really helping um, helping the look of it too much, so let's just leave it alone for now. Great, so let's turn these perspective lines off and jump back a little bit. I'm going to hold Command minus. It's going to let me zoom away. So that's looking pretty cool. Um, let's just make sure we're centered with this window. You know, I'm just going to reduce the opacity so I can see through my layer. It's kind of a nice trick. Actually kind of looks kind of cool having it be a, the curtains be slightly transparent too. Might be something to think about. And if we wanted to do that, I could just go into this group, go to the curtains layer only, and reduce its opacity. Just to give us a little light shining through. Cool. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to hold Alt, drag this group down, or up. I'm going to hit V for the Move tool. And again, I'm going to place this right about where I think the left side of the curtain is going to end up. Approximately right about there. And obviously we need to scale this down. Before I do that, I'm just going to turn the perspective lines back on. I'm going to hit Command T. And then I'm going to hit the Alt button. If I hold the Alt button down, you can see this little um, icon opens up next to my cursor. Um, so that means I can move the anchor point around wherever I want to. So I'm going to put this anchor point right here on this curtain rod bar. And that's going to allow me to scale t right towards it. So once I have my anchor point set, I'll release Alt, hold Shift, Oops. I'm going to hold Shift and Alt, and that's going to drag my selection directly towards that anchor point. So I'm keeping an eye on the floor. I want to make sure that 
my curtains stay on that red line. And they're a little bit stretched, so I'm going to pull them in this way a little bit. And I'm going to have to adjust the perspective slightly. As you can see, it's not quite accurate with the window. Again, I'm going to hold Command and Plus. Hold Spacebar and pan over. So that's looking pretty good along the bottom. The top, you can see that the bar is not going um, along the same line as this green line here. So I have a little bit of squeezing to do here. Pan down. My dog's going crazy outside. And cool. So that's looking pretty good. All right, so basically that's how we put curtains on the left side of the wall. That's one method. For those of you who are following along with the living room design kit, um, I just want to show you how I would go about using the curtains in, in that scenario. Uh, let's go ahead and turn off these. And I'm going to turn on the original again. All right, so I'm just going to hold Command, click on the curtains image in the layer. I'll then hit Command or Control C to copy that. Let's go ahead and turn this off. Command D to deselect that. And let's go into the walls. Right now I'm dealing with the left wall, so I'll just open up this left wall layer or group. And then I'll double click on my smart object. That's going to open up my left wall. So we have our wall textures, shadows, trim, windows. So we want to paste this above the windows. I'm going to hit Command V. And that's going to bring in our curtain. I'm going to hold Command T. And just scale that down to approximately the size. I just want to show you how easy this is going to be. using this kit. All right, it's a little bit wide. Scale this down. Cool, let's just stretch that slightly down. All right, and then let's duplicate that once. V, slide it on over. Center it in the window. And let's hit Command S to save that. And when we toggle back to, oops, still saving, uh, you can see that uh, the curtains are perfectly in place. Uh, so it's kind of self-explanatory of how quickly um, this kit can help you guys out if you're interested. Um, but the first way is just fine too, if you have a little bit more time. But again, uh, making a template that can be used over and over again just like this living room kit is super valuable. It's going to save you a lot of time. So if you guys are interested in uh, this kit, head on over to the Design Cure shop. And, uh, and we'll see you in the next tutorial. In the following tutorial, I will be going over how I manipulate an armless chair from a common three-quarter front view to a not-so-common three-quarter back view, resulting in a pair of chairs to be placed on my styleboard. Keep in mind we do have a downloadable template available on the Design Cures website, built for all levels of Photoshop experience. It's filled with everything you need to quickly build custom rooms at the click of a button. Spend less time building rooms and more time on design. Again, be sure to subscribe to the channel and receive new tutorials every week that will help you master Photoshop for interior design. Thanks again for joining me and we'll see you next time.